In the next series of lectures, we're going to review entropy and free energy. And before we dive into that, I'd like to do a little bit of a thermochemistry review. Uh, we spent a lot of time in Chemistry 161, the first in our, our three chemistry class series, uh, talking about thermochemistry. Um, so in your lecture slides, I've included some of the constants uh, that we were using and the tables to calculate things like enthalpy or internal energy. So I have these for you here. These are for a quick, easy reference, so you don't have to rifle through the text or dive through your old notes to find them. Uh, we've got energy conversions for calories and kilowatt hours and joules. We also have a specific heat table for some of our common substances. And you can always find more specific heat capacity information by searching online or looking at a chemistry desk reference um, textbook or text. No. Um, I've also put in some of our standard enthalpies for uh, formation. These allow us to calculate enthalpy uh, at, for, for an overall reaction. Uh, and so these are here for you as well. Note that the elements are all zero. And here are the equations we used a lot when we discussed thermochemistry before. Uh, so first there's the change in energy. And so this is looking at the change in energy of a system. It's always gonna be equal to heat and work together. In chemistry, we spend a lot of time focusing on heat, this Q right here. And we spend less time talking about work. Uh, work is the equal to the negative pressure times the change in volume. And we really incorporate work when we do calculations around uh, around energy when we are dealing with reactions that produce a gas or consume a gas. So we would have a significant change in volume. And these are not going to happen. You're not going to see a big change in volume if you're just working with um, a solution that stays aqueous the entire time because a liquid isn't that compressible. Heat we used quite a bit more, um, and going back to heating and cooling curves, one of the common expressions of this is that heat is equal to the specific heat capacity of a substance times its mass times its change in temperature. And that'll be the heat that is lost from it or gained to another part of the system. We can also calculate heat during a phase change by um, taking the number of moles of the substance that we have and multiplying it by the enthalpy of vaporization or condensation or fusion. Huh, had to remember it. Uh, so, but we, we use this one a lot when we actually saw that the temperature change rather than it staying constant. So because a lot of the calculations we look at have a very negligible contribution from work, we actually have to find a new term called enthalpy that we use to track how energy flows, how heat specifically flows from one part of the system to another. Uh, enthalpy is essentially the change in energy of a system, but ignoring the work component. And so we can rearrange this equation here and get this. Uh, and we're stating then that H is our enthalpy, uh, which will be that the change that you see in the enthalpy of a reaction will be the same as the heat you calculate for that reaction. Asterisk at a constant pressure. So we use these a lot. If these are unfamiliar, I would go back and review some of the notes from 161. Um, on Canvas, we have review notes for you to go through if you don't have your own or can't find them. Another key concept that we raised in one earlier in the quarter in 161 is the concept of exothermic versus endothermic. This is looking at the change in internal energy of a chemical reaction and comparing that energy of the reactants to the energy of the products. And if our reactants are higher in energy and they form something lower in energy, they're forming a more stable compound or series of compounds in that product state. And so because those products are more stable, 
there was this energy that was tied up in our reactants that we don't need anymore. And it's released out into the environment. Uh, so that gives us this released heat, gives us an enthalpy that's going to drop. Because energy is lost from the chemical reaction, which we view as the system, into the surroundings, which could be the solution it's dissolved in, or the beaker, or the gas around it, we're going to see that loss of heat and energy as a, a, a negative enthalpy. Now, the opposite can happen too, where we have pretty stable reactants and we form products that are less stable. And because they're less stable, that means we need more energy to be input into the system to be able to create those chemicals. And so in an endothermic reaction, heat needs to be absorbed into the system to be able to form those products. Heat's actually a, basically a reactant. It's something that's required to be able to actually make it happen. And so that change in enthalpy is positive because the system is taking in energy in the form of heat. And so we call that a positive enthalpy. So exothermic, negative enthalpy, heat is released. Endothermic, heat is absorbed and our enthalpy is positive. So calculating enthalpy. We actually covered three ways of calculating enthalpy. You can calculate from experimental data. Um, and if you don't have that, if you're just relying on uh, published or given information, you can calculate the enthalpy of a reaction by calculating um, the, taking the enthalpies of other known reactions and rearranging those equations and summing them up into one that you can then manipulate the enthalpies and add those up um, and get something that would represent the enthalpy for the reaction you're interested in. So I've got a set of steps here in uh, this slide that review how to go through these problems. Um, and if you'd like some practice problems, you can look back in your book at this chapter. The other way to calculate enthalpy is for a uh, from standard enthalpies of formation. And so in this case, we take the reaction we're interested in and we focus it on each reactant and product and we look up the formation enthalpy for that chemical. And we take the sum of all of those enthalpies of formation for the products. For each product, if it has a coefficient that isn't one, we multiply that enthalpy of formation by the coefficient. So we take that sum for the products and we subtract the sum of those enthalpies of formation for the reactants. Again, multiplied by the coefficient in the balanced chemical rea reaction.